Welcome. We're so glad you're with us today. And we uh, are looking at Jesus as our friend today. And I think we're going to sing some songs that you will like today. But as usual, let's begin with praying together the Lord's Prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's sing Amazing Grace. Amen. because of God's amazing grace that we can sing the songs that we are going to sing today about Jesus being our friend. So let's sing that first verse once more and then we'll sing When We've Been There 10,000 10, Years. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. first hymn today is one that if you grew up in the Anglican or Episcopal Church, you are probably very familiar with. In other uh, Protestant churches, you are probably not quite as familiar with, although it's in more hymnals now than it was some years ago. And it is Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. And we sang this, I think, during Lent. So I hope that we uh, remember that from singing it together. So we're going to sing Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. Let's sing that first verse. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. He is the center, he is the throne. Alleluia, he is the trump. chapter 9, no, chapter 7, verses 9 through 12, we read, After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Or if you're from other parts of the country, <laughs> rather than we Southerners, Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength 
be to our God forever and ever. So let's sing, Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Is the scepter, is the throne. Alleluia, is the triumph, is the victory alone. Hark the sings of peace to Zion, thunder like a mighty flood. Jesus, out of every nation, has redeemed us by His blood. Isn't that wonderful to think? This Sunday uh, is Pentecost Sunday, and so we have read today on our table. And uh, when we think of Pentecost Sunday, we think of all of the people who were gathered in Jerusalem from so many nations uh, in that part of the world. And um, it just that song reminds me of that and that we are singing to Jesus, uh, the Lord of all nations. So just it's a good a good song, a good reminder, and a good thought. Well, our next hymn is Jesus Loves Even Me. Is that right, or did yes. I skip one? Okay, good. Jesus Loves Even Me. In John chapter 15, we read these words. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. I have said these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus is our friend who laid down his life for us. So let's sing, Jesus Loves Even Me. I am so glad that our Father in him tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Well, in First Timothy chapter one, verse four. 15, the Apostle Paul wrote these words to his young friend, Timothy. This saying, this saying is reliable and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the biggest sinner of all. Isn't that amazing? The Apostle Paul, who took the gospel to the known world at that time, most of the known world at that time, and yet he knew himself to be a sinner, and he said, I am the biggest sinner of all. And these words in this hymn reflect that thought that Jesus loves even me. Sinners before we come to know him and sinners after we come to know him because we still need his love and forgiveness. The second verse of this hymn says, Though I forget him and wander away, still does he love me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms I do flee when I remember that Jesus loves me. Let's sing that again. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. 
This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Our next hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Is yes. that right? Okay. I'm so afraid I'm going to get things mixed up today. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27, we read, The eternal God is our refuge. Think about that. The eternal God is our refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. What a wonderful thought. Let's sing that first verse together. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. get to the chorus of that hymn, uh, we need the choir and the men singing, leaning, leaning on Jesus, leaning you know. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. That's it. We need to hear that, leaning on Jesus, because those words help take us from the eternal God in the Old Testament into the New Testament. And um, so it, anyway, I just miss hearing the bass sing. Uh, when we get to the chorus. So if you're, if you're a gentleman and you're singing along with us, you might want to join in, in the chorus and singing, Leaning on Jesus, Leaning on Jesus, Safe and Secure from All Alarms. Um, let's sing that one more time. I'll put it up a little higher so they Okay, so you bass or altos. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, Leaning on you. for playing that for us. It just seems like we were missing something without the leaning on Jesus part. Our next hymn is the shelter in the time of storm. And Jesus is our shelter in the time of storm. We all go through times of storm and he is our shelter. God is our rock and our refuge. And in Psalm 62 verses 5 through 7, we read, For God alone... For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. If he is a mighty rock, and he is, he is certainly our shelter in the time of storm. Let's sing that first verse together. The Lord's our rock, in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever will be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. second verse says, a shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, 
No foes of fright, a shelter in the time of storm. And the third verse says, The raging storms may round us beat. We'll never leave our safe retreat. For Jesus is our shelter in the time of storm. One more time, let's sing that together. The Lord's our rock and Him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. last time and we sang a weary land I I thought about what we as a nation are going through this past week this past seven days it was a week ago that we learned of the shooting at the elementary school in Uvalde Texas and 21 people were killed and we are weary aren't we we are so weary of mass shootings and people being killed by gun violence we are a weary land and those words just spoke to me and it is good for us to remember that Jesus is our rock our refuge our shelter in the time of storm when we are so very weary so let's try to remember that as we continue to hear the news every day of all the things that have made us so very weary our next hymn provides another uh, word of guidance for us, and it is only trust Him. So when we are in this weary land, we definitely need to trust Him. Isaiah 26 um, says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. Let's... Um, Let's sing that together. Only trust him. recorded in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Boy, we need to hear that now, don't we? Wow. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Jesus is our friend that we can trust him. Trust in. Let's sing only trust him one more time. Call every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him. Him is one that I did not grow up singing very often. Um, I have some recollections of it, but we did not sing this one very often. But it, the title of it is No, Not One. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Proverbs 18, 24 says, Some friends play at friendship. But a true friend sticks closer than one's nearest kin. That's a good description of our friend Jesus, isn't it? Let's sing, There's Not a Friend Like the Lowly Jesus. No, 
not one before we sing. I just have to, Bill and yeah. I were talking about this, and we remember that the children when they would sing this song, like in a Sunday school gathering, no, not one. Yeah. <laughs> they would shake so their well. fingers, you know, that little pointing finger, and I say, no, the not uh, one. Uh, adults to do it back at me. <laughs> so there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Let's sing that. There's, there's not, not a friend like the lowly Jesus. Jesus. was written by Johnson Oakman, who was in the insurance visit business, but the work was not satisfying to him, and so he became, uh, he was an ordained Methodist minister. He couldn't get a church. Apparently, he wasn't a very good preacher, and it just didn't, you know, it just didn't work out for him. He liked to sing, but everyone compared him to his father, who was a great musician, uh, one of the best singers in the state. And so even though he had above average abilities in singing, he just didn't know where he fit in. And he needed a friend like Jesus. We all need a friend like Jesus. We don't have to be down and out or in the hospital to appreciate the words of this song. We all experience times of stress and loneliness. And we need a friend, a friend like Jesus. Let's sing that one more time. There's not a friend. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else can feel all the storms this Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows Well, that leads us to sing that I've found a friend. Oh, such a friend. He loved me before I knew him. He drew me with the cords of love, and thus he bound me to him. And round my heart still closely twined, those ties which naught can sever, for I am his and he is mine forever and forever. Let's sing that first verse together. I found a friend, oh such a friend, who loved me ere I knew him. He drew me with the cords of love, and thus he bowed me to him. And round my heart still closely twined, those ties which What can, can separate us? No, he drew me with cords of love. He bound me to him. I am his for ever and ever. Those ties can never sever us. And Apostle Paul had that in mind when he wrote these words in Romans chapter 8. Who will separate us from Christ's love? Will we be separated by trouble? or distress, or harassment, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things, we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I am convinced, 
Paul writes, that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death or life, nor angels, nor rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Isn't that an amazing reminder for us? Nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's sing that one more time. Have we sung it only once? I found a friend, oh such a friend, wise God me ere I knew him. He drew me with the cords of love, and thus he bound me to him. And round my heart, still closely tied, those ties which joined and sever. Change the words. They did. Here. This our our song sheets say Christ is my I am Christ and yes. Christ is mine forever, something and like that. Like, and that's I all like right. To change. Uh, it's okay. We uh, sing what we remember, and that's why these are old, familiar hymns. We sing these hymns because they are familiar to us. So it is natural for us to go back to those words that we have heard and sung so long. Uh, well, this is one of those that we have heard and sung for so long, and it is in the garden, in the garden. Psalm chapter 5, verse 3 says, O oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. And this hymn speaks of being in the garden and the dew is still on the roses. You will remember that. Let's sing that first verse together. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear calling on my ear The Son of God is Words to this hymn were written by Austin Miles, and this is what he wrote about his, uh, it's his account of writing this hymn. He said, one day in March 1912, I drew my Bible toward me. It opened at my favorite chapter, John 20, verses 1 through 18. That meeting of Jesus and Mary Magdalene had lost none of its power to charm. This is the story of Jesus meeting Mary in the garden the morning of the resurrection. As I read it that day, I seemed to be part of the scene. I became a silent witness to that dramatic moment in Mary's life when she knelt before her Lord and cried, Rabboni. My hands were resting in the Bible while I stared at the light blue wall. As the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of the garden, looking down a gently winding path shaded by olive branches. I awakened in full light, gripping the Bible with muscles tense and nerves vibrating. Under the inspiration of this vision, I wrote as quickly as possible the words that could be formed exactly as they appear today. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. A wonderful account of the writing of a hymn that so many have grown to love. And for many people, it is one of their favorite hymns. Let's sing it together. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the road Oh, 
next hymn and uh, next to the last hymn yes. is what a friend we have in Jesus. We've been singing about Jesus, our friend, and this song really says that, doesn't it? What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. In Philippians 4, verse, uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, we read, Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we need to rejoice, give thanks, and make our requests known to Jesus, our friend. Let's uh, sing the first verse, and then I'll tell you the story of the person who wrote this hymn and learned that Jesus was his friend. about our problems you know we tell our friends and we complain and moan and what we should do is be talking to our friend Jesus isn't it yeah well this hymn was written by Joseph Scriven this song that we love so much and it was written in 1855 he was a man acquainted with grief uh, he aspired to be uh, as a young man to follow his father's footsteps as a royal marine but his poor health made that impossible. Then he fell in love and was engaged to be married, but his fiancée drowned before their wedding could take place. To put as much distance as possible between himself and that tragedy, he moved to Canada. While living there, he became engaged again, but his fiancée became ill and died before they could be married. In his grief, Scriven determined to devote himself to a life of service. He was especially known for carrying a buck saw and cutting firewood for people in need. He, once uh, later, he received word that his mother was quite ill. He could not afford to return to Ireland, so he sent his mother a poem he had written in hope that it would comfort her. The poem began, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Later, this poem was uh, submitted to a religious journal, but it didn't have his name on it, and it was published. And a few years later, he died in 1866, but his poem lived on and became famous by the leadership of Ira Sankey, the music evangelist for evangelist Dwight L. Moody. And he began using that hymn in, his, um, in their revival services. The poem, as I said, was published, uh, but may, uh, was not known who wrote it until as Scriven was dying, um, friend, um, was going through his things and trying to find something, you know, to share with him. And he came across a scrap of paper with that poem written in it. And um, we learned that he was the author of this great hymn. Let's sing it. We've only sung it once, right? Okay, good. Let's sing If we've sung it twice, we're going to sing it three times. But we're going to sing it again, okay? What a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grace to
what a friend for sinners. And you will recognize the tune because it is the tune to the first song that we sang today, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. I told you that one of these days we were going to sing more than one hymn to that tune, and this is the day. I love that melody, and these words were set to that melody. Um, This hymn is sometimes also called Our Great Savior. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. I want to read to you from Luke chapter 7, verse 34. The Son of Man, or the human one, came eating and drinking, and you say, Look, a glutton and a drunk, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. And in Titus, we read, Titus chapter 2, my marker stuck to my finger. Titus chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. We wait for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, wow. You want to hear that again? We wait for the blessed hope and the glorious appearance of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. Let's sing, Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. He, my Savior, makes me our friend. Saving, he saves us. Helping, he is our constant helper. He keeps us and he loves us. He is with us to the end. What a friend for sinners. The other verses say, Jesus, what a strength in weakness. Jesus, what a help in sorrow. Jesus, what a guide and keeper. Jesus, I do now receive him. More than all in him I find. He has granted me forgiveness. I am his and he is mine. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Let's sing that again. Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul, friends may fail me, foes assail is none other. Well, let's sing, uh, not sing, let's read or recite together the 23rd Psalm. He is our Savior. He is also our shepherd. So let's share that together now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou preparest a table of comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even with the words in front of me, I can mess it up, can't I? Well, (laughs) oh well. Well, let's uh, hear these words of benediction, and then we will join in singing together, God be with you till we meet again. May the God of peace, who brought back the great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord Jesus, from the dead, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing to do his will, by developing in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory forever and always. Amen. I have to say it one more time. Hallelujah. What a Savior. Let's sing God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel's guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet a Jesus meet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. May God be with you till we meet again. Bill? <laughs>